Today we're going to review part one of submitting claims to insurance and part one deals with your settings in the program. Once you have these done, you won't typically have to deal with them again, but this is step one in making sure that accurate information is getting over to the insurance company. So what we're going to start with is if you have logged in and you're the owner or you have manager, uh, manager role enabled, then you'll click on practice settings and we're going to first review the information entered under general. If you are a group practice and billing out under a type 2 NPI number um, and, a, um, and a group tax ID number, that information would be entered under general. And just double check and make sure that that information is accurate and that your address is accurate and you have the nine digit zip code entered. Claims will be rejected if you don't, do not have a nine digit zip code. And you may want to ensure that any address that you're using standard abbreviations for the post office. Um, by that I mean, you know, instead of using lane, use LN, remove any periods for south, put S, capital S instead of spelling the word out. Um, this is because you only have a certain number of digits on a claim form to have that address go into and if it's too long it will cut it off. So just make this as, as simp simplified and abbreviated as possible. Okay, the next step is going to be going to our um, staff. And if you have staff members who are billing insurance, you'll want to make sure that you have that staff member's tax ID um, if they are billing out under an individual tax ID at all, listed under their license of information and that they have their NPI number as their individual NPI number listed here and make sure that's at, that's accurate for each of your providers. If you have a provider who's not yet licensed and doesn't have a tax ID NPI number, don't worry about that. You're probably not submitting claims for that patient, for that pr provider. Next, let's go to our practice settings and click on billing and insurance. This is um, very, very important for insurance claim submission. And the first thing we're going to look at is your CPT codes. So under CPT codes here, I have these set up. And we give you the basic CPT codes listed here. CPT codes that you're going to be submitting to insurance are in this top section and you'll need to make sure these are activated if you're going to be billing these CPT codes. You can come and make that happen at any time. But you'll notice here I just activated 90846, but I've not yet entered a fee. You must have a fee in order for a claim to be created for that CPT code. Okay, so make sure that you're taking care of that. So make sure your CPT codes are activated. Only CPT codes in this section that are under standard CPT codes will be sent and create insurance claims. Okay. You have another section that has add-on codes. These are codes that are billed in addition to a CPT code that's listed up here. These situations are rare unless you are billing um, for psych testing or you are a prescriber. Um, but there are a couple instances that you might be using if you are a therapist um, who typically just sees who does not do testing or, or prescribes. And that is this 90785 CPT code for interactive complexity. And it's 90840 CPT code for additional time you spent for patients in a crisis situation. On down are custom CPT codes. CPT codes in this area will never create a claim. But this is helpful to know because if you um, offer discounted fees for like sliding scale or private pay clients, you'll want to set those up down here. For example, I set up this SS75, but claims would not be involved. All right, so make sure that you save any changes that you've made on this screen. Next, we're going to go back to the billing and insurance screen, and we are going to go to insurance features. Insurance features is where we would set up uh, the insurance companies that we're going to be billing. And this is a list that is going to be group wide for your group. So um, you have, this is a list I've already started creating for this particular entity. But if I'd like to add a CPT or a insurance company to this list, I'm going to click the plus new button. And I'm going to search 
by the name of the insurance company. I could search by a state name, um, and I'll show you what comes up. For example, if I start, search by a state name, Texas, um, this is helpful if I'm looking just for plans that are specific to Texas. For example, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. If I were to put in a search word of blue, this is going to bring me up a heck of a lot of entries and all of the Blue Cross plans across the United States. It's a long entity. Okay. Also, I could search for things like Aetna. Um, and this is going to bring up a lot of Aetna plans for me. And you might be sitting here going, how do I know which one to choose? Well, what you would do is rule out the ones that you know you aren't involved with, such as uh, you're probably, if you're not living in Michigan, you wouldn't be involved with any of these plans that have Michigan listed. Um, Aetna Better Health is a different entity than Aetna itself. And you'll notice the payer ID numbers over here on the left. This is an identifier for a particular insurance company, so I can see that Aetna Advantage, Aetna Affordable Health Choices, Aetna Healthcare, Aetna Healthcare, Aetna Health Fund, these are all basically the same entity. They all have the same payer ID number. So the most important thing is to say, hey, it's Aetna, and I'm going to hit Select, and I'm going to um, be able to add this to my list of insurance companies. Now, when you're adding an insurance company, these are settings we have preset for these particular situations. So usually you don't have to do much to this, except that if you are choosing a Medicare plan, um, you'll need to change the insurance type to Medicare. Or if you're choosing a TRICARE situation, you'll need to, need to choose this insurance type to TRICARE. So just make sure and take a look at that if you are billing any of the government plans. Claim submission type, you'll have an option of electronic, paper, and simple. Electronic means that when you send a claim to this company, it's going to go out as an electronic claim. Highly recommend that. It's super simple. You may have some insurance companies that you have a unique need to create a paper claim and mail that off to. Um, so that is an option, probably not used very often. And then what's called simple list. Simple list is for those situations where you're billing a third party payer, maybe something like Magellan EAP. Um, in my case, Magellan EAP does not allow for electronic claims. They don't want um, a paper claim, but I have to go to their website and I have to enter the details about that session with my client so that I can get paid. Um, but I'd like to track it in therapy appointment so that I can update that. So that is the use of this simple list for those type of in, those type of third party party payers that don't uh, want a claim but have their own unique paperwork or in or website that you have to go and do that type of situation. Okay. <clears throat> now every insurance company has some presets here. I recommend just leaving those as they are um, for that for this time and uh, you can click save and done okay and this just told me that i already had a, a payer id 60054 do i want to create a new one and the answer to that is no i don't you may have some situations where you do so um, now if you are billing an insurance company and you are in a group practice you may have some situations where different people in that group need different things to go out on claims this is particularly true possibly if you have different uh, provider types um, in your group um, and so that can be customized. So if I go to setup of these insurance companies and I see for example Aetna Better Health, if I click edit here I can scroll on down and see all the providers in my group and this is where I could go to set unique claim settings for uh, for example this provider. Maybe this provider needs a service modifier to always go on claims that we submit to Aetna, but nobody else does that. It's, an, it's a, you know, having a service modifier here is probably not the norm, um, but it is possible. Also, maybe this provider, instead of billing out under the group tax ID number, uh, she's not, uh, maybe she's an individual provider um, and not part of the group, and she needs to send those out under her individual tax ID number. So this is a section where you can edit and make these claims go out exactly as that insurance company requires. If you don't know what to do here or you don't know if you have this, leave it be. 
We have this set up automatically for how 90% of insurance companies want this. Typically, those one-off situations might be Medicare and Medicaid plans specifically. Okay. Now, last but not least under practice settings is about how you're going to be sending claims to insurance companies electronically, but the connection for that. So um, that connection is a clearinghouse. And right now I have this set up and it's automatic for you that it's set up to send claims through therapy appointment claims. However, you may want to submit claims via uh, your own account with Office Ally Clearinghouse. And if that's the case, Office Ally would give you what's called an SFTP connection. And that SFTP connection can be entered here. And we have more about that in this help article. Okay, so that's part one of getting ready to bill insurance companies, your settings. Make sure for the next part that we pay attention to section two. Thank you.